So self-love is the number one way to get over a narcissistically abusive relationship. But when it comes to the garden of self-love, you reap what you sow. You harvest what you plant. One reason it's so hard to practice self-love when you're in a narcissist relationship is because you don't water your own garden. You're so busy trying to like plant seeds of love in the other person's garden, in that narcissistic person's garden. So instead of watering yourself, working on yourself, giving yourself love, you give that love to the other person. Eventually, your garden of self-love withers and dies. You lose yourself. You forget who you are. You forget what you like to do. You lose a lot of friends and family and things like that. You don't even recognize yourself anymore. But the great thing about the garden of self-love is the fact that you can replant your seeds, you can water them, and you can grow a new a whole new garden of self-love and appreciation. It might take a while for those seeds to grow, but at least you planted them and you're watering them now. They tried to bury you, but they forgot you were a seed. Keep growing that garden. Hope this helps. What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of A Narcissist Explains. I am self-aware, diagnosed narcissist Lee Hammock, better known as mental illness across all social media platforms. If this is your first time seeing my face or hearing my voice, I'm a diagnosed narcissist, of course, and I use my platform to raise awareness for NPD, Narcissistic Personality Disorder, uh, get more people into therapy like myself four years strong and also validate the victims and survivors of said disorder um, This series is dedicated to making my TikToks and YouTube shorts longer Just going into greater detail into those 60 second clips that y'all love so much um, th So the TikTok you just watched was about the was titled the garden of self-love Because self-love is the most powerful thing like when you're trying to get past it get over a narcissistic relationship a toxic relationship um one of the main, that's one of the main questions I get. People always ask me, like, how, what's the first step in moving on? How do I get past this person? Why am I addicted to this person? Of course, when you're trauma bonded to the person, it's like an addiction. It's like, literally like a, <clears throat> it's very, very similar to a drug addiction. How you feel? Like, you can have withdrawal symptoms. Like, you, if you're trying to cold turkey a drug, you can have withdrawal symptoms to the point where you are, you know, like you have physical symptoms. Like, you're shaking, have hives, you don't eat, you eat too much, you drink, you, whatever you do. To get over that person, whatever you do, do, whatever your withdrawal symptoms are. And once you get past that, you still are going to think about the person. I know a lot of people, you're two, three months out of a relationship like that, a toxic relationship, and you're still stuck on the person. You still want to, you still, you know contact, but you're thinking about everything about contacting them, wondering what they're doing, wonder um, whose cheeks are getting clapped here and there. But you just, it, it's on your mind. I, I understand that, y'all. I know. I, I, that part I do understand. <clears throat> So one of the questions I ask people when I'm talking to them over Zoom and I'm doing one-on-ones with them, I always ask people, y'all, like, what are you doing for, what have you done for yourself lately? And what did you do for yourself while you were in that relationship? And a lot of people, it takes people too long to answer that question. Or they give, like, simple answers, like, I'll go to the gym. I do this. You know, I, it's just so, it's so, such simplistic things. But the, the most common answer I get when I'm asking people that question is, I don't know. So many people say, I don't know. To when I ask them what they do for themselves, like you know what I don't know, I don't know what, what I said. What do you like to do? I don't know. I like to do stuff for other people. I like to hang with my friends. I like to go do this. I like to do stuff. It's always involving somebody else, you know. It's always involving someone else or something, something along those lines. So I tell people, I always tell people, I'm like, look, <clears throat> if you want to, you know, get past this person, you have to learn how to relove yourself. I, you know, I use the. Uh, you know, the analogy of watering a garden. Because when, you, when you're in a toxic relationship with a narcissist or whoever, you are typically, you know, both of y'all have gardens, you are watering their garden. You know, while, while watering their garden, I mean, you're, you're giving all the love, care, and affection to that person, all your time, effort, energy, energy to that person. So you're watering them. But they are not reciprocating that. They are not giving you everything that you're giving them back. Because there's no, you know, there's really, very, there's very rarely any equal equal reciprocation in a, in a tax relationship. You're not going to get in what you put out. You're not going to get back what you give. You know, so if you are watering their garden, your pet, your pail is emptying, right? Your garden, your watering pail, your watering bucket, whatever you're using is empty. The supply is running low. So if you don't refill, if nobody waters your garden, your garden will die. In the garden of self love, if it dies, you die. You get, you reach emotional death. You don't leave, lose yourself because you emotionally die. You know, you lose yourself. You don't know who you are anymore. You were not, you are not right now. In the relationship you're in right now, you're not the same person you used to be. That's the most common, that's one of the most common things I hear right there. I'm not the same person I used to be. I don't recognize myself. I don't like to do the same things that I used to like to do. All the other stuff right there. It's, all, it's, it's something very, very simple to that. It's, you know, people always say, I don't know who I am. I, I've lost myself. You, what do you like to do? You've lost yourself. 
It's time to refine. It's time to find yourself. It's time to figure out what you want to do with yourself. It's time to figure out what you really truly like to do, because you. It's up to you. The narcissist is gonna do narcissist to people like my, even including myself. We are self-serving people, y'all. We just are. We like to serve ourselves first. You know, whatever it takes to make our, whatever it takes to try to make us happy, whatever we think is gonna make us happy, we're going to do it. You know, especially the unaware narcissist. They're gonna do it off impulse and you know just being erratic behavior. <clears throat> They're going to do whatever it takes to make themselves happy. So if, that, if that's to your detriment, if that's to your loss, so be it. So who's giving back to you? You got to relearn to love yourself. You got to re, you got to redo stuff for yourself. You just have to. You have to. You have to give back to you. You have to. That's point blank period. End of story. You have to do for you. That's it right there. Like, what do you like to do? Do stuff for yourself. You've spent so much time, effort, energy giving to this person for no gain, for very little gain. I know you. When I say very little gain, I'm very mean very little emotional gain, very little self love gain. I don't mean financial. I don't mean kids and stuff like that. Because you're like, I got my kids. If I wouldn't have gotten in a relationship, I wouldn't have my kids. Okay, I understand that. I wouldn't have got this relationship. I wouldn't have had this money. I understand that. But what about the emotional? Because people can have kids and money and be truly be truly unhappy. What are you doing for you? You know what I mean? You have to do something for yourself. You have to learn to relove yourself because if you don't, you're going to lose yourself. And when you lose yourself, you lose your life. What do you want to do? And I, and I, and I like it's not just a physical thing. Like when I say do something for yourself, it's just not physical. What are you doing for yourself intellectually and mentally? Read a health book. Read a book about being stronger. Read a, read a book about self love and self preservation. Learn to relove yourself and do things for yourself. Go to therapy. Give back to your mental health, your mental wellness. And hire a counselor, a, a, a life coach, or something along those lines. Somebody that's very qualified, highly qualified in teaching you how to relove yourself and things like that. They are, that's what people are here to do. Help you figure out what you want to do with yourself. Because you spend so much time. A lot of times, sometimes people, people have spent 30 years, 37 years in relationships like this. I thought the woman, 45 years in a relationship like this. 45 years with a toxic narcissistic person that damn near trying to kill her all the time. You ain't trying to unalive her all the time. Sorry, YouTube or whoever, wherever this video is going to be posted at. You mean, so just uh, you, you give so much to other people. What are you doing for you? You know what I mean? 40 years and you get, trying to get divorced? Like, what are you going to do? Who are you now? You go into the world. Some people are ready, ready to go and they get ready to get free. They, they, some people are, are excited to get out where they just scream and they're free. You know, I watch um, a lady on TikTok I follow. Uh, my name is uh, Anna. She get well, she on a, she moved out of her house with her toxic narcissistic person. She was screaming and yelling, happiness. She was crying, but she was super hype and happy. And it was cool. I was like, damn, that's cool. She's ready to go. She's ready to find herself. Yeah, you're gonna have times. It's gonna be nights when you just don't know who you are and don't know how to fight it and fuss and things like that. You're going. You like, I wish I knew. I wish I could do more. I wish I want. I wanted to do more. What more can I do? I need to give more, back more to myself. And you lose yourself, like I said, <clears throat> you by yourself. So there also. Do stuff for yourself intellectually and mentally. Like, go to the beach. Sit on the beach. Disconnect from the world. Like, turn your phone off and disconnect from the world. Meditate. You know, do some meditation. Mentally clear your brain and just start over like that way. You know what I mean? Have some, do some gratitude exercises. Do things. I'm grateful. Even though I miss this person, I'm grateful. I'm not with them anymore. Now I have a chance at happiness. You know what I mean? Do something for you. Because you have to. Because they're going to do something for them. They're going to move on. Probably going to move on quickly. And try to make you feel like you were worthless. Like they're going to move on extremely quickly. Make you feel like you were worthless. Probably show you know show that new person off on social media and things like that. You know show how happy they are with the new person and things like that. And then you know be super happy and super joyful and thing and like that. So you have to choose you. You have to be you. you have to be the person you want to be. Because like when you go to, and that's why I say you have to go no contact to it. And if you don't have kids, of course, and you don't have any kind of business you know, business relationship with this person, you have to block them. Block them, go no contact, do all the other good stuff. Because like you, that's the type of stuff you have to do when you deal with toxic people. You just have to, like literally. Um, <clears throat> and it's a it's a long road, y'all. It's a healing journey. It really, really is. It's not a healing destination, y'all know. I've said, I've said you can't, you cannot catch a flight to healing. Like one one way ticket to healing, please. You can't do that. You got to walk there. You have to walk to healing. And everybody's pathway and everybody's distance to healing is going to be different. Well, it's a healing journey. One foot in front of the other. Baby steps are still steps. Like my daughter comes in here, she can walk in here. It takes her longer to get where she wants to go because she's almost she's about to be one year old next week. Um, 
but she still gets there. It takes her longer. Her little baby steps, her little feet are a little moving. Mine are gonna be bigger. So don't compare your don't compare your healing journey, and your self love journey to anybody else's because you you like I said, comparison and competition like comparison is the thief of joy. If you compare yourself to somebody else, like oh I'm supposed to be farther in my healing journey, I'm supposed to be a lot further. It hurts. This hurts. You gotta you gotta choose you. You gotta do better for yourself. If I tell you, you know. So anyway, uh, thank you for tuning into another episode. If you haven't know, if you didn't watch my last video, I did test positive for COVID today, and I'm just tired now. I'm just like, oh my goodness. Here we go. So I'll be in the house the next four or five days, however long it takes to get, you know, get a negative test, and be back into the world. So you, I'm going to be making videos. Yeah. Pray for the family. You know, thank y'all so much. Peace. With the hell is that? Peace.